Hi everyone, in this video, I want to share with you an amazing tool that I use all the time to check how much memory I need to run a large language model locally on my laptop. This tool is called VRAM Calculator and it is made by the awesome folks over at Apex Machine Learning. Go show them some love on LinkedIn. To access the tool, click on the link in the video description. The first thing you need to do is to specify the task you want to perform. Here we have two options. We have inference and fine tuning. Inference means using the model to generate text. And fine tuning means training the model on custom data. Let's start with inference. You start by choosing a model from this list. Uh, let's choose a model that I can't by default run on my machine. I will choose Quen3 30 billion, this one. On the right, we can see how much memory is needed. In this case, I need 69 gigabytes of VRAM. Luckily, we can reduce this amount by changing some parameters. First, we have inference quantization. This parameter controls how precise the model's weights are. Weights are just floating point numbers and you can store them with different bit sizes, 64, 32, all the way down to one. The fewer bits you use, the less memory the model needs, but you also lose some precision, which can hurt performance. By default, the VRAM calculator picks 16 bits, but you can bump it up to 32 bits if you want. But that almost doubles the memory needed. Before it was 69 gigabytes, but now it is up to 137 gig gigabytes of VRAM, which isn't ideal. So we usually go lower. Popular choices are Q8, Q6, and Q4. Let's select Q4. You can see that after switching to this quantization, the memory drops from 69 to just 18 gigabytes. Like I said before, lowering the bits can reduce the model's quality, but experiments have shown that it doesn't really make a big difference, even down to just 4 bits per weight. Right below the VRAM requirement, there is a memory allocation graph. It shows how the memory is split across different parts of the model. We have weights, activations, KV cache, and the framework overhead. The first four values are part of the model itself, while the last one depends on which framework you are using to run the model. Let's switch back the inference quantization to FP16, and let's check the memory used by the weights. You can see that here we have shared weights and expert weights. Sometimes you might get just one value, but because this Quantry model uses a different architecture, they are split. But the sum is equal to 66 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, if we go to inference quantization and change that to Q8, let's see what will happen. Now the sum is equal to 33 gigabytes, which makes sense because we cut the bits in half. Before it was 16 bits, but now we divided that by 2, which will divide the memory required by 2. And if we go all the way down to Q4, let's select Q4, the weights only take 16.5 gigabytes of VRAM. The next parameter is KV cache quantization. This one controls how much memory the KV cache gets. Same story as before. If we go from FP16 to FP8, the memory required will be divided by 2. Currently, the KV cache requires 0.44 gigabytes, but if I change that to FP8, I will get 0.22. Since the KV cache does not use a lot of memory, I usually stick to FP16 or FP8 if I really want to save more space. Now let's talk about the hardware. In this list, 
you can pick your GPU or one with a similar amount of VRAM. In my case, I have an RTX 4070 mobile, but I cannot find it here. And that GPU has 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So I could, for example, select the RTX 46 TTI because it contains the same amount of memory. After that, you can also set the number of GPUs. On my system, I have just one, but if you have more, make sure to change this value to the number of GPUs that you have. I'll keep that set to one because this is the number of GPUs that I have. You can see that in my case, because I have only one GPU, I cannot run big models. But if you have more GPUs, you will be able to run those models. And as you can see with three RTX 4060s, I can run this model without any issue. But the problem with this approach is that it is very expensive. What you can do instead is to mix VRAM with your system RAM. Let's go back to one GPU. And here we have an option that will allow us to enable offloading to CPU or NVMe. Make sure to enable it. And here you can either choose CPU or NVMe drive. I'll choose CPU slash RAM. And let me explain what does what offloading means. Offloading basically means moving some layers of the model out of VRAM. A large language model contains a lot of layers and those layers perform computation. And by default, if you want to run that model on a GPU, the computation will be performed there. So you have matrix multiplication that is performed by GPU. And GPUs perform these calculations very fast. This is why we love to run the full model inside a GPU instead of splitting it. Here offloading allows us to keep some layers inside the GPU and remove the rest from the GPU and perform those calculations on the CPU. For example, in my case, since this model needs 18 gigabytes of VRAM, I could keep only, let's say, a seven gigabytes of VRAM worth of layers in the GPU and take the rest outside the GPU and put it in the CPU. This is why we have, for example, this model has 60 layers. So for example, I could take 12 layers and put that in the CPU and the rest are going to stay in the GPU. But this is not if it, uh, sufficient. So now we are going to use 15 gigabytes inside the GPU, but the rest is going to go to the RAM. Let's keep increasing this until we get something that works. 29 still not good. Let's go up to 45 maybe. So 45 is good. But if I want to maximize the amount of memory that is used by the GPU, I can play with this slider. Uh, let's try 42. Yeah, 42 looks good. So now we are using 7 gigabytes of VRAM inside the GPU. And as you can see, we need to have roughly 12 gigabytes of RAM, of additional RAM in order to run this model. As you can see, this option is not as expensive as buying more than one GPU because RAM is very cheap. But the problem with this approach is that it is going to be slower because we are splitting the model. We are running some computation inside the GPU and the rest is running on the CPU slash RAM, which is very slower. But this at least allows you to run very big models, even if you don't have GPUs with high VRAM. If you want, there is also an option to offload the KV cache, but as you can see, the KV cache does not consume a lot, so there is no need to do that. There are a few more settings like batch size, sequence length, and concurrent users. Let's start with batch size. This controls how many requests the model can handle at once. Instead of sending one input at a time, it processes a whole batch. If you increase this, let's say that we want to process eight inputs at the same time, you will notice that the amount of RAM that, that we need is going to increase. Moving this from one to eight requires 10 gigabytes. So instead of seven, it changed to 10. Increase that to 32. And as you can see, the, we need more, more RAM. But if you are just running the model on your own, it's not a big deal, just keep it set to one. You don't need to make multiple requests at the same time. Same story with concurrent users. If you are not planning to serve this model to others, 
just leave it set to one the last and most important setting is sequence length this controls how many tokens the model can handle at once by default it is set to 1024 tokens but sometimes that is not enough the coin model that i am using here for example can go up to 131,000 tokens if you try to use all of that the memory will go from let's say in this case 7 gigabytes to 118 which is a lot so keep this in mind when picking a model and deciding what you want to do with it coding for example might need long context windows while simple tasks like classification or email summarization work fine with smaller ones if we scroll down a little bit we can run this model let me decrease this value a little bit to 1024 and let's also uh, look at these numbers you can see that here this vram calculator estimates that the generation speed will be 21 tokens per second and we can also verify that because here they have this section where they allow you to simulate inference this is not going to use any hardware but they are just going to show you how that speed is going to look like click on this play button and as you can see 21 tokens per second will be something like this if i stop this and change the quantization from q4 to let's say q1 you can see that the, now the generation speed is higher 30 tokens per second i can also probably add more gpus to increase that to a higher value just to show you the difference now i can repeat this and as you can see the generation is very quick finally we have the fine tuning tab this is where you can train the model on your own data by default the method is set to full and as you can see if we want to do that we will need 500 gigabytes of storage and that's a lot in practice people usually go with either LoRa or QLoRa the difference between these two is how many bits they use for the weights you can see when I selected LoRa the base model precision is equal to 16 bits but if I use QLoRa it will use 4 bits instead and as you can see the requirement went from 600 gigabytes or how much it was i think five yeah 500 gigabytes to 50 gigabytes which is really awesome we also have this when choosing lora we get this parameter which is called lora rank you can read more about it but basically increasing lora rank will add more weights let's say i choose 64 look at the ram required it increased by one gigabyte let's go 640 now it says 62 so try to keep this one small because with LoRa we add more parameters to the model start with 16 or 8 and um, yeah keep keep adjusting those values and here in the memory allocation you can see those weights here finally we have gradient accumulation you can read more about it here but this one you use it if you can't increase the batch size because increasing the batch size will consume a lot of memory let me go back to full just to see how this will affect the, the memory required here one batch size meaning that you will train the model on one input at a time and this is going to be very slow usually during fine tuning we want to use a lot of i mean we want to increase the batch size so that training becomes faster but the problem is that you will need a lot of memory look what will happen if i want to process eight inputs at the same time now i need an additional 30 gigabytes what will happen if i go up to 64 now i will need 700 gigabytes so that's a lot so gradient accumulation allows us to simulate a batch size of eight so if i come here and set this to eight it's like i have used eight so here i will run eight iterations and then i will apply the gradients and th this is just a technique that we use during training and that is it if you want to see how the apex machine learning team has created this calculator i highly recommend reading this article click on this link and here it is it is an amazing article they have shared a lot of uh, things that they also have shared code 
that you can run yourself in order to verify those numbers if you want you can see that the article is very long and it is very detailed uh, you will enjoy reading it and i assure you you will uh, after completing it you will learn a lot from it that is it for this video see you in the next one